Okay, just tap your screens. So welcome, welcome everybody uh, to your flow, your yoga flow today. Let me just put it onto spotlight. There we go. Okay. So some of you have probably been off your mat for a little while um, over the festive season. Uh, we will work with a little bit of strength, but also some lovely stretch and getting into shoulders and neck as well. So we're going to begin standing up on the mat. Um, be very aware of coming into rhythm. Yoga dance, birthing dance, because that's what we will be focusing on today as well. So please come to stand on your mat. Facing any direction, whatever works best for you to look at the camera to begin with. Stand with your feet hips distance apart, relax your arms by your side. So when I work with shoulder mobility, and we often begin our classes with shoulder mobility, it's not only to unlock the shoulders, but it is also to release the diaphragm and create more space for breath. As you close your eyes, feel your way down into your foundation, your feet. Get a sense of being firmly in place. And then begin to notice your midline from your crown all the way down the spine to a spot between the feet. Notice how your midline also reaches from the crown up to the heavens and that it extends beyond just the body. Become very present to this midline of your system and begin to notice if you feel truly in your midline, in your center, or if perhaps you're feeling slightly outside of it, to one side in front or behind. Begin to notice your center of gravity as baby grows, this changes. And settle into even breaths in, even breaths out. You can open your eyes, looking just beyond the nose if your eyes were closed. Take a moment to drop your consciousness to your babies. Touching your awareness to baby, letting them know that they too are at their practice. We'll open the breath. Inhale, sweep your arms out to the side, interlock the palms, continue to inhale as you press the interlace up to the sky and grow the length of the waist, lifting the kneecaps. Exhalation, separate the palms and slowly synchronize the movement and breath, lower the arms back down by the side. Two more times, inhale, sweep your arms out, up, interlace, press the interlace to the sky, engage the legs, grow the legs. Exhalation, slowly bringing your arms back and down by your side. Once more, deep breaths. Continuing with shoulder mobility. Inhale, fingers together, reach your arms forward, raise your arms past your ears and near your ears. Lift the sternum, press the palms back. Exhale, slowly bring your arms back and down by your legs. Two more times, inhale, extend. Lift the legs, open the heart by drawing back slightly and then all the way down. Using this as an opening meditation to settle into the rhythm of your breath and allowing for space around the ribs into the diaphragm. Beautiful. Putting it all together, inhale, sweep your arms out to the side, interlace. As you press the interlace to the sky, bend your knees. Exhale, draw the arms back behind your head, squeeze between the shoulder blades, 
strongly open the front body. Inhale, reach your arms back as far as you can behind you, and then swing them forward. And exhale, straighten your legs and slowly bring your arms down by your side. Inhale, sweep your arms out to the side. As you interlace, press up and sit down in your chair. Exhale, draw your arms back behind your head. Wing the elbows open strongly. Keep a strong chest, squeezing the inner thighs. Inhale, separate the palms, reach the arms back as far as you can, and then all the way forward, knife edge of the palms almost touching, and exhale, straighten the leg, and bring your arms back down by your side. These could feel surprisingly expressive in the body. Inhale, sweep your arms up, final round. As you press the palms up, sit down in your chair, lift your pubic bone to the base of the belly, exhale, hands behind the head, a vibrant space through the front body. Inhale, release the palms behind you, slowly draw the arms forward, straighten the legs, and on your exhale, bring your arms down by your side. Close your eyes and feel. Step to the back of your mat, feet as wide as your mat. Rotate the toes out slightly. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, only come down halfway if you think you have a compromised cervix, otherwise all the way into your squat. Deep inhale, interlace the palms, press into the feet, rise. This time on the exhale, swing the arms back, squeeze between the shoulder blades, come down into the squat, hands to namaste as you squat. One more time. Inhale, press the interlace forward, rise. Exhale, sweep the arms back, down, hands to heart, and you're in Malasana, squat. Take three deep breaths in Malasana. The hips are internally rotating, which is creating space at the top of the pelvis, but narrowing the base of the pelvis which is why when you birth, you won't birth with the knees in an outward direction, either on hands and knees or the knees slightly in towards each other to create space at the base of the pelvis. Fingertips come to the ground, lift your hips, parallel your feet, so heel toes onto the parallel, walk your hands forward, and you're in a downward facing dog. Spread those fingers, press back through the creases of the hips, allow your belly to soften and your neck to relax. Focus on the exhale breath here, extending the exhale, a longer exhale. If you choose to breathe the exhale out of your mouth, that is practice for labor, your labor breath. But a reminder to inhale through the nose. Please step your feet a little bit closer together. Gently come down onto hands and knees and cat and cow fluid movement now in your cat and cow just finding your way with your breath you can close your eyes and really feel into the spinal movement these movements amazing and early labor where you're assisting your baby by moving the body spiraling it's a dancing bird Beautiful. On your next inhale, as you look up, exhale, bring your chest between your thumbs, touch the earth, kiss your heart to the ground. Inhale, push up strongly, round, and press back to a downward facing dog. That is pretty vinyasa. If you're practicing normal in yoga class, in person yoga class, You'll do that instead of high plank up dog, please, so that you can avoid having abdominal separation. Choose which long side of the mat you're going to face and step one foot forward and then spin to the long edge of the mat. Set your foundation this way. The feet are not so far apart that it's a wide legged forward fold, it's for a trikonasana. However, if I have two parallel lines, drawn from the short edge to the short edge of your mat, 
your feet are rotating outwards by about two centimeters. Bring your hands to your hips and rise. So it's a very small external rotation of 30 degrees of the feet, not 40, not completely outward, a very small external rotation of the toes outwards. From here, lift the kneecaps and now feel your pubic arch and engage the top of the pubic bone to the base of the belly. Hands to the hips, take three breaths in our triangle foundation. This trikonasana is a little bit different than you taught in normal yoga classes. We will keep the feet at that external 30 degrees. Inhale, open your arms wide, palms face the sky, rotate the thumbs back and out. Lift up through the front body. Another deep inhale breath to the crown. Exhale, reach to the right, place your right palm just below the knee on the shin and extend your left thumb up and over. Keep the rotation of the toes slightly outwards. Inhale, rise. Open the arms wide, palms face up, shoulders down, gaze down, chin slightly tucked. Exhale, extend to the left, left palm just below the knee, reach your right arm up past the ear and over. Finding a deep, open side body stretch through the right. Inhale, rise, open the arms wide. And this time on your exhale, spin your heart to the right, keep the feet braced into the earth, lift up through the sternum. Take another deep inhale, chin slightly down. Exhale, left palm to the right shin, belly is soft, but now reach the right arm up, opening the right ribs quite strongly. If your heart is going pitta patta and it's too much for you, keep your right hand on your sacrum instead of reaching it to the sky. Take another deep breath in this rotation. Inhale. Open your arms out, keep your heart facing the right, lift the chest, exhale, hands to the hips, and find neutral. Relax the shoulders, explore a breath. So with this slight internal rotation of the hips, external rotation of the toes, and the engaging of the pubic bone to the base of the belly, it helps us to keep the internal muscles strong and avoid pubic synthesis pain. Open the arms out, palms face up to the sky, shoulders down, chin slightly tucked, take a deep inhale. Exhale, spin your heart to the left. Inhale, lift up through the front chest. Exhale, right palm onto the left shin. Keep pressing your right hip back and lift up through the left palm. Keep your chin slightly tucked, gaze across, not up. The rotation is happening through the ribs. Inhalation, rise, still heart faces the left. Exhale, hands to the hips, relax a moment. Please keep the slight external rotation of the feet. Reorient the feet if you've lost that. Again, engage through the pelvis. Top of the pubic bone comes up and just deepens to the base of the uterus. Engage the legs, please lift the kneecaps. Inhale, open your arms wide. Exhale, begin to reach your chest forward and then take your palms into a wide V shape. Press your fingertips to the ground. Keep engaging the legs back. Walk the fingertips forward as far as you can. And then press your palms firmly to the ground as you release the chest deeper and relax your neck. Keep engaging the legs and feel into the hamstring stretch. And if, her, if the hamstrings are a little bit tender, keep the knees slightly bent, please. You'll still get the benefits. Beautiful. Taking one more deep breath. Bringing your hands to your hips, inhale, rise with length through the spine, please. Turn your right toes to the short edge of your mat and bring your left foot parallel, traditional trikonasana. Open, opening your arms wide, take a deep inhale, exhale, extend to the left, right. Place your right palm on your shin, reach your left arm high. Open your chest broad and wide. You might take the gaze to the ceiling or keep the gaze to the right big toe, depending on how your neck feels. 
Beautiful. Inhale, rise. Bend your right knee deeply. Now you're going to overshoot the knee. I know that you're breaking all yoga rules. We're going to create some stress and strength in the ankle joint. Extend, feel into the right hip. Keep reaching and leaning to the right. Pause here for a moment. Take your right fingertips to the ground. You have choices. You can stay here or you can float your left leg parallel to the earth for a strong Ajahn Chandrasana half moon. Find space across the front body. Explore a strong half moon. If you're not taking your half moon, you're in a variation of side angle. Rebend the right knee, float the left foot down to the ground. Inhalation rise, both hands to the hips. Rotate the right toes so that they face the long edge of the mat. Rotate the left toes to face the short edge of the mat. Trikonasa foundation. Square up the pelvis. My tendency is to sink into the left hip. So see if you can get the hips even right off the bat, even. Open the arms wide, take a deep inhale, extend to the left, place the left palm on the left shin and reach right arm high up to the sky. Try not to collapse and spin the ribs down, collapsing around baby, rather keep rotating that right rib firmly open. Inhalation rise, opening the arms wide. Exhale, bend the left knee, keep leaning to the left, pause here, keep reaching and leaning into the left side. Take your left fingertips to the ground. Option, stay here, baby on the inside of the left thigh, or float the right leg parallel to the earth, walking the left fingertips forward, finding a strong half moon. Half moon is an amazing pose for pregnancy, helps to open the round ligaments, engage the endocrine system, stop itching in the skin and also nausea, creates strength in the uterus and engages well through the muscles of the cervix. Slowly bring your fingertips to the ground, bend the left knee, bring the right foot to earth, spin your feet parallel to each other on their axes, maybe to Toes rotate slightly inwards, your choice. Walk your palms forward for a pregnancy version of Prasadita Bhagavatanasana once again. This time with a slight internal rotation of the toes. Relax the chest, head, jaw, and take a few deep breaths, filling the silhouette with your breath. We were working with integrity of the postural structure through that sequence, which helps to stabilize the pelvis. In turn, this allows us to carry our babies to term comfortably. Walk both hands to the front of the mat, please, and step back to a downward facing dog. And gently come onto hands and knees, rolling cat and cow. As you look up, roll out the hips, the ribs in circles. You can change direction whenever you wish. Beautiful. A reminder. That circling the hips during labor, figure of eight, moving the body, all movements, helping baby move into a good birthing position and helping mother to open the passageway for birth. Come to center, inhale, lift the gaze, exhale, option. Bring your chest to touch the earth, keep the elbows close to the ribs, Inhale, press up powerfully. First of all, round the spine and then move back to your downward facing dog. Finding your sturdy dog, focus on your exhale breaths. Lift your gaze. Place your left foot where your left palm is and gently bring your right knee down to ground. 
Inhale, raise the chest. Now engage correctly. That means you'll narrow the hips and feel like you're squeezing the inner thighs towards each other. Pull on your left foot slightly and engage your right knee towards your left heel. And that will bring a, a, a line engagement into the pelvis. This is important. Right glute is turned on. Inhale, reach both arms high. Exhale, rotate to the left and look to your left thumb. Inhale, prayer above the crown. Exhale, squeeze right left heel and right knee towards each other and open up into a right side twist. Inhale, reach both palms high. Exhale, place your right palm on the ground opposite the left foot. Heel turn the left foot out to the edge of the mat and reach your left arm high, side angle. Easy twist. Again, we're looking for space. Find it. Two options available here. Press firmly into the right palm and swing that left leg back. Either put the left foot on the ground back of the mat or float your left leg parallel to the earth engaging deep transverse muscles and finding still point. Try not to slump into the joints, press away from the earth and engage into the deep interior muscles of the body. So good for diastasis recti, which is the separation of the abdominals. Beautiful. Bring both hands down to the ground, bend the left knee, swing the leg forward if you can. If your pubic synthesis is sore, Bring both knees to the ground first and then step the left foot forward. Stay high if you have pubic symptoms pain, otherwise rocking backwards and forwards. These rocking lunges are all here to help open the body and reminder, rhythmic undulations help to bring on contractions and allow you to move with the contractions instead of against them. These are all primal movement patterns that will feel so good in labor. Heel toe your left foot off the mat and stir the pot. Big circles, rocking backwards and forwards, changing direction, just doing what feels good. This particularly can help a baby find internal rotation to align with the birth canal, particularly if you have posterior baby in utero. That means that the baby is slightly turned in a way that might make labor a little bit more intense. It'll bring pain to the lower back. And to avoid that, you can do these movements to help baby rotate. Straighten that left leg and slide the heel away. Walk your hands forward to the front of your mat in a wide V shape and gently bring your chest down. Keep the hips high, bow, and take a good deep stretch into that left hamstring. If you lost your broad breaths, come back into deep, full inhale, exhale breath. Walk your palms back, sit down on your right heel. Inhale, sweep your right arm up, bring it to the ground behind you. Bend your left knee, press into left foot and right palm, rise, lifting baby to the sky. Three point back bend, bring baby down underneath the pubic arch if baby is sitting too high towards the end of pregnancy. You can do this in labor as well with the baby that is too high. Gently come on down. Come onto your shins in Vajrasana, hands to the thighs, close your eyes, and let your breath return to natural. Bringing palms to Anjali Mudra. Inhale, lift the hips, lift the arms. 
Turn the arms back in a wide arc as you open your chest, squeeze and drag down the shoulders and sit down on your heels. Inhale, curl the spine forward slightly as you bring your prayer forward. Rise, exhale, deepen down. One more time. Inhale. Exhalation. This time, inhale, reach your prayer high. On your exhale, bring your palms down to the ground. Strong practitioners stay on the tops of your feet as you scoop baby up. The rest of you tuck your toes under and move to downward facing dog, either on the tops of the toes for a couple of breaths or not. If you're using tops of the toes yoga, after a breath or two, you'll step your feet onto the ground, having worked out the tops of the feet. If it feels like pain, not pain, not pleasure, don't do it. Look to the front of the mat, step your right foot forward. It's a square lunge as you bring your left knee to ground. Again, we're going to spend a bit of time with the setup. Press away from the earth, elevate the spine. Traction. Traction your right heel and left knee towards each other and feel an inner squeeze of the thighs. This engages correctly so the pubic symphysis will not be aggravated. Inhale, reach both arms high. Exhale, open twist to the right. Keep engaging that left glute. Inhale, reach both arms high. Exhale, open twist to the left. Inhale, both arms high. Pause into this. Exhale, left palm comes to the ground opposite the right foot. Heel toe the right foot out, particularly if baby is big. And reach your right arm high to the sky. Press into that left arm and then find a strong line of extension along that vertical line up to the right fingertips. Keep your breath broad. Slowly extend that right leg back. Either place it on the mat or see if you can float your right leg parallel to the earth and find still point. Not always easy. But the body will begin to make self adjustments that will turn on the correct muscles to keep you here. These are all good muscles for helping for post birth recovery. Both hands come down to the ground, bend the right knee, and gently set the right foot to the front of the mat. If it tweaks the pubic plimpsis, bring both knees to the ground, then step and rock the lunge. This is part of your early labor cycle. And from the feedback from my moms who are doing early labor, coming up towards labor or in their early labor, they really are experiencing easier labor stages. However, this is not to say that the pushing stage won't be difficult for first babies. Pushing a baby out isn't necessarily easy, so you need to be prepared for the hard work. Beautiful. Heel toe your right foot off to the side and stir the pot. You can go very slowly and carefully, or you can be flamboyant with these movements. Just listen to where your body is at. Beautiful. Straighten your right leg, slide the heel away, walk your hands forward in a wide V shape, and gently bring your chest down to the ground. It helps to flex the right foot and roll onto the back of the heel to get a deeper stretch. Of course, you'll feel your way and notice what feels good. If it's hard to reach to the ground, have blocks or books that you can place your palms on so that you get a better stretch in these shapes. Walk your hands back, gently sit down on your left heel, 
slide your right foot back slightly, inhale, sweep your left arm out, turn a wide arm, place your hand to the ground, and rise into a three-point back bend. Don't come up if you're not feeling strong or it just doesn't feel right for you. This helps to open up the round ligaments, making space for baby, and strengthens the lower back enormously. Beautiful, Sarah. Gently come on down. Coming onto both shins now. Remember that coming out of the shapes is just as important as how you get in. So coming out mindfully is really important so you don't tweak the psoas or the lower back. Hands to the thighs, close your eyes. Take a moment, soften the shoulders. Again, we're going to work to bring energy into the spine with a series of gentle twists. Bring your palms together in front of you. Inhale, reach the arms high, lift the hips. Exhale, open twist to the left. Inhale, reach your palms high. Exhale, sit down on your heels. Follow the flow of your breath. Inhale, rise. Exhale to the right. Inhale, reach both arms high. Exhale, sit on the heels. Inhale, rise. Tuck your toes under and separate the knees slightly. Exhale, twist to the left. Two options. Left hand to the hip, reach your right arm up. Very small back bend. Or left hand to your left heel, reach your right arm back. Open the right side of the body. Check in with yourself and see that it feels okay for you. It's looking good, Annika. I just want you to take it gently. Inhale, rise to center. Both hands to heart center. Spare a moment, toes remain tucked under. Inhale, breath, reach your arms high. Either right hand to the hip, lean into it ever so slightly, or right hand to your right heel, grip firmly, and take it back a little deeper. Press away from the right heel, both hands to prayer. Bring your knees a bit closer together. Sit down on your heels and bring your palms to your thighs. Feel the line of the feet opening, conditioning the arches of the feet here as the ligaments soften so the arches can drop. We don't want that to happen because it does bring a set of problems post birth and even during pregnancy as well. Taking two more breaths in this toe stand. Inhale, sweep your arms high. Exhale, bring your palms down to the ground. Now you can either move straight back to down dog or unclip your toes. Scoop baby firmly up into the spine, so round. Then press onto the tops of the feet and lift your knees. This is not for everybody. Some of you will be in a traditional dog already. This is only for those of you with a strong practice where your ankles and tops of the feet are strong, and then you'll step it out. So, Ira, you've done plenty of yoga, and not just pregnancy with me, so those will be familiar to you. Beautiful. Please bring your thumbs to touch. Walk your feet forward to the front of the mat and come into Malasana squat front of the mat. We're going to complete with a standing series that requires um, some focus. Please make adjustments if you're finding it difficult to stay in your balance. Anika, just for today, I know that your standing series is usually very strong, but just for today, I don't want you to take the arm variations that I'm going to offer. I would prefer you to keep your arms out in front of you or out to the side for balance. Interlace your palms, and that is for Annika. And rise, heel toe your feet, hips distance, and exhale, arms down by your side. You might choose to keep a soft gaze in front of you or close your eyes. And just take three breaths of meditation, settling into where you are, coming back into that midline.
Beautiful. Please sit down in your chair. Inhale, reach your arms up. Now, this is where I would like you to keep your, either your hands at your hips and the cup or your arms up to the side. For the rest of you, if you wish, sweep your arms up, take them back in a wide arc and bring your hands into reverse prayer. If reverse prayer is not working for you today, you can hold opposite elbows, Hanukkah, hands to hips. Shift your weight onto your left leg, keep the left knee bent, pick the right knee up, find a balance. Slowly float your right leg back, keep your chest elevated, pause. To rotate your right toes out, gently bring the right foot down to the ground, warrior one foundation. Wow, those were amazing transitions. Make sure that your left foot is more to the left side of the mat, the right to the right. If your right hip is skewing away, guide it forward. Inhale, lift up through the front line of the body. Exhale, straighten your left leg, guide your heart forward and bow deeply. Baby on the inside of the left thigh. Bend the left knee, inhale, rise. Virabhadrasana one with Paswatanasana. Straighten the left leg, exhale, bow. Bend the left knee, inhale, rise. You can always release the palms if it's too much for you. And finally, straighten the left leg. Exhalation, take a deep bow. Three breaths here, either keeping reverse prayer palms or bringing hands down to the ground or hands to hips. Bend your left knee, inhalation, rise. Release the prayer, interlace your palms. Flip the interlace to the, up to the sky to open the wrists. And then from here, spin on your feet, rotate your toes outwards, wide goddess, hands to the knees. Deep in the wide goddess, you can brace the arms and drop through the hips to feel. Scoop your right shoulder over to the left side. Twist, looking over your opposite shoulder. Great shapes during labor to take tension out of the spine between surges. Open to the other side, twist. And gently coming back to center. Place both hands to the front of the mat. Step back, downward facing dog. Bring your thumbs to touch. Walk your feet forward, either side of the little fingers. Malasana squat. Interlace your palms. Inhale, rise as you flip the interlace high, parallel the feet. Exhale, arms down by your side. Take a moment. Reminded to make adjustments according to where you are in your practice today. Sit down in the chair, Utkatasan. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, hold opposite elbows or bring your hands into reverse prayer. This time round, you could have a tighter reverse prayer. Shift your weight onto your right leg, pick your left knee up. Keep the right knee slightly bent, reach the left leg back like a stabilizing rudder, open your heart. Pause. Baby is your center of gravity, rotate your left toes up, gently bring the left foot to the ground, warrior one foundation. Beautiful transitions. Inhale, lift the front line of the body. Exhale, straighten the right leg. Reach your heart forward and bow deeply. Release the palms if it doesn't serve you. Bend your right knee, inhale, rise. Exhale, straighten the right leg and fold. Bend your right knee, rise. Exhale, straighten the right leg, bow three breaths.
Bend your right knee. Inhalation, arise. Release the prayer. Ventilate your heart. Bring the right flow back into the rest as you flip the interlace up to the sky. Rotate to the long edge of the mat. Open into your wide goddess. Feel powerful. Hold. We're going to take that deep inner hamstring stretch. It can be quite healing and it can take it easy on your right side. Place your right forearm to your thigh. Reach your left arm up and over. Half bind your left arm behind you. Two options. Catch your right ankle strongly with the right palm, straighten the leg and bow, or bind your right arm underneath your thigh, catch your left fingers, keep your left knee bent, straighten your bound right leg, your right leg, and bow. You choose where you're going. It's a deep stretch on that right side. Left toes still rotate outward, so do the right. Release the bind, bring your fingertips to the ground, rebend the right knee, capture the thighs, rise. Taking it to the left, left forearm to the left thigh, reach your right arm up and over. Right arm and half bind. Choices. Catch your left ankle strongly with your left palm straight in the leg, or bind your left leg and then straighten the leg. Keep deepening the right knee as you fold forward to find even more of a hamstring stretch. It'll be very intense on the inner groin, so I might suggest, Annika, that you keep your hands on the ground for support, but you'll find your way well enough. Release the bind, both hands come to the ground. Gently rotate to the front of the mat. Set back down dog. Softly bring the knees to the ground, open knees. And you are now in your child's pose. Let go, release and soften. Coming back onto all fours, please. Roll it out with rolling cat and cow. Beautiful. Slide your left shin forward. Tuck your right toes under, elevate the knee, and then press the ball of the right foot back until it feels right for you. Shimmy the hips backwards and forwards with a tight right leg so that you get into the fascia around the hips. And then lay that right thigh down options. Come forward into seeming pigeon. Or you might choose to flip the right foot up and work the quadriceps stretch of your choosing. Ira, if your mermaid is still in your practice, take it. We'll join our friends in the sleeping pigeon for another three or four breaths. So we have worked into some strength today so take it easy for the rest of the day take a rest if you can but we do have a couple of moms getting closer to birth now so needing to find that strength in the body for a good labor walk your palms back we're going to get deeper into that left hip Roll onto the left hip and slide your right thigh to your left foot. 
It's a deer shape. Mukunda tilts first, very good for a pregnant pelvis. Right hand onto the left knee, left palm to the ground behind you. First of all, we curl around our baby, tucking the chin on the inhale. Exhale, lift your right glute, swivel the right hip forward as you take the gaze over the left shoulder. Continue to do this a few times, pulsating into a curved spine on the inhale, and then unraveling the spine into a twist on the exhale. Again, rhythmic movements, a reminder that even these movements in labor can be very, very helpful. Take it into the twist and hold. And gently unwind the twist. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to make space for baby now. And then take a forward fold. Slide your left heel forward and there's a space between the thighs. And the left shin is across. Bring your belly between both thighs and then walk both hands over the right left foot and left shin. Try and now lean over that left shin with baby snug between the thighs. And then allow the chest to become heavier and bring a bit of weight into the left hip for a deeper psoas and piriformis stretch into the left hip. So Sarah, your belly is getting big, Annika, yours too. So just keep accommodating baby as best you can. If you need to, you can always come out into the gap more rather than over to the left side. So just find in your happy place. We'll spend another three breaths here. So we're blocking blood flow into that left hip so that in a moment we'll bring the flow there and it'll feel good. Walk your hands back and step both feet out in front of you and then rock the knees side to side, bringing the flow back into the hips. Beautiful. Taking the pigeon now on the right side, extending the left leg back, tuck the toes under, lift the left knee, and pulsate. Slide that left ball of the foot away, gently bring the thigh down. Either forward into your sleeping pigeon or find the quad stretch if that feels right for you today. Gently releasing, and for another three or four breaths, sleeping pigeon. Press into the earth and rise. Roll into that right hip and just slide your left knee up to your right foot. Left palm to the right knee, Mukunda toes. Right hand to the ground behind you. Curl around your baby. Exaggerate the tuck of the tailbone under and exhale. Lift the left glute and spiral your gaze over your right shoulder. Do that a few times, your own rhythm. Sometimes if we've been sitting too much, we get sacral plate fixations, base of the spine. And if you have been sitting for a certain period of time, before you just run off and back into the world, be sure to do a few of these movements on the mat or on the floor, and then take your first steps. And this will ensure that you don't tweak 
the ground ligament and then you release the sacral plate fixation. Take it into the spiral and hold the twist. So one of the, the reasons that because the muscles are under strain and some of the ligaments are under strain as baby gets bigger, you get those spasms. One way to avoid spasms is to work out the body with some movements first, those kind of rocking movements or knees backwards and forwards like that and pump out the round ligaments before stepping into the world. And that will really help to warm up the ligaments before you start moving. Come back to center, slide the right heel forward to make a square with that right shin, baby between the thighs. You can either walk your hand straight forward or over to the right side, lean into that right hip, baby snug onto the inside of that right thigh and take a bow. And remember that it is between 18 and 24 weeks that the round ligaments can sometimes feel really tweaky as they suddenly have to start expanding for a growing baby. And just pumping the area first, getting the blood flow there, and then movement will be a huge help so that you don't tweak it and then you have a problem for a couple of months trying to stabilize an unstable round ligament. Beautiful, walking your palms back and then gently coming to seated position. Hands lightly on the knees or in your lap. And we'll just take a few breaths here to center before coming down to Shavasana where we will move into a gentle guided meditation. Noticing how the body feels now. It was a stronger practice as we came back to the mat from the holidays. Some of you did join me on Monday, but I do definitely have felt this in your body. Placing a hand to heart, hand to baby. Spend a moment in that heart, baby connection, harmonizing the mind space to your heart space to your womb space. Finding that both beautiful coherence through, through clarity of mind, love of heart, and warmth of womb. Beautiful. Please find a comfortable position for your Shavasana. You might hop onto a couch, you might lie on your side on cushions, or you might stack up cushions and lie in sort of butter kamas and salt and feet. I'll give you a minute to find your comfortable position. Remember, just has, having some cushions close by can be super helpful. Beautiful. Softening into Shavasana, get comfortable. Relax your eyes, relax your face, relax your body. And a reminder that whatever birth you are choosing, and whatever birth you need to support your process. There's just a couple of things that you can do that makes baby's transition into this world easier. In ancient times, babies entered this realm under the light of the moon or in soft light. The quality and quantity of light frequencies that enter our eyes have a profound effect on our hormone production 
and state of consciousness. When we give the soft light, helps this transition so that we can move into a deeper place of trance. We can move into that altered consciousness of perception by creating a supportive lunar feminine environment for the journey of childbirth. And as you breathe slower and deeper, just imagining your birth experience, creating the right conditions for you and baby, whether it be in hospital, birthing unit, or home. And just taking note of the small things that could make a difference to your experience. If you're going into a hospital room, make it your own, claim it. Put down the lighting, bring your own dimmer lamps if you need to. Move the bed to create space and claim the space that you will use to birth in. So that you can support the production of oxytocin, the love hormone, and inhibit the production of adrenaline and cortisol. This relaxed lunar energy increases the production of endorphins and helps you to surrender to the birth experience that is right for you and your baby. Remember your baby is coming through a gateway between worlds. Baby needs to surrender, you need to surrender into that downward flow of Shakti, the birthing contractions, ecstatic waves of pleasure and intensity. That you can be in a higher consciousness as you bring your baby through. We are whole, we are love and we are light. as you breathe in the light surrounding baby in this light. Knowing that we walk into a new earth, birthing our babies onto a new earth. And so we create the conditions to ground the new energies and frequencies through these beautiful, brave dragon children. Our cosmic further of all radiance and vibration soften around our being and carve out a space within us for your presence and abide. Namaste. Have a beautiful day.